Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Anil Varach on the line, and he's Executive Vice President and Director at Step Gold. Anil, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Adam. All right, Anil. So excited to get into today's topic. So we'll talk about Step Gold and uh, Precious Metal, specifically some of the work you're doing in Mongolia, and uh, get your opinion on some other subjects too. A lot of investors, business owners, and executives listen to this to get ideas and tips. So excited to talk to those th- about those things with you. Um, and just to get us kicked off, I'll start with our with our signature question, if you will. So Anil, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. Anil. What mission matters to you? Um, the mission that matters for us is actually building uh, a sustainable business, uh, a business that can actually generate uh, profitability uh, over the longer term. Uh, it does not have to rely on a, on a, just an exit strategy, meaning a, a sale to another company, in order to create a, a win for ourselves and our investors. We we ourselves are, are our donors of, of this public company. Uh, alongside our investors. And so what we're trying to, to do is create a business that uh, can be sustainable. So as, as profitability kicks in, uh, as it is today, uh, we can continue that for decades ahead of us. And uh, really the win for investors and ourselves can come from the return of capital from that profitability uh, instead of just a, a, a trade sale, as, as you know many businesses are set up for or only have one path to success. Uh, and so really that's, that's been our goal is create a business that can grow uh, generate free cash flow, and at some point in the future can can actually be returned uh, to ourselves and investors alongside ourselves. Um, if you know, if uh, a trade sale uh, doesn't occur, so it's something we don't have to rely on, I guess, is, is something different than than maybe some other businesses. That's awesome. Um, lo- love bringing these mission-based entrepreneurs and executives uh, on the line to uh, to share what they're up to. Um, and I guess it, let's just start with Step Gold. So tell us a little bit more about the company. Sure. So uh, we founded Step Gold at the end of 2016 as a private company here in Canada uh, with the intent of building Mongolia's premier precious metals company. So myself, uh, I'm, I'm on the board and I'm a co-founder of the company at the end of 2016 with my partners, Matt Wood, who's a, a geologist by trade and has built many mining companies and sold them uh, successfully for, for you know hundreds of millions of dollars each. Um, and our other partner in Mongolia, Bata Tumur, came up with the idea to, to establish this. You know, the timing was right. Precious metals were actually out of favor at the time. And we saw an opportunity to build a company and build a base in Mongolia where there's already a track record of success. So Bata and Matt previously built a coal company about 10 years ago, and that was a $20 million IPO, and 18 months later, they sold it for half a billion dollars cash. So there's a track record of success and execution in the country that we're doing business. But more importantly, you know, the country is one of the, you know, the most resource-rich countries in the world, but yet still underexplored, already home to world-class discoveries and mines, uh, especially on the copper side with the Oyotoge mine, which is still a very large gold producer, but one of the, will, will be one of the largest copper producers in the world that Rio Tinto operates. Uh, so certainly home to world-class discoveries and mines. And we wanted to focus on precious metals where we thought we had the distinct advantage. Matt being a, a gold geologist by trade, uh, obviously knows the commodity well, knows the country well. And we saw an, an opportunity for us to kind of be first mover 
uh, ahead of ahead of the pack. Uh, and so 2016, we set up the company. 2017, we acquired our first two assets, uh, with our leading asset being the ATO project that we purchased from Centera Gold, which is also a multi-billion dollar publicly listed uh, gold producer. They had spent about 30 million U.S. on the project, um, drilled 6,000 meters, and most important, importantly, got a fully licensed and permitted for the mine that we just built and brought on uh, uh, um, uh, successfully last year during, uh, unfortunately, COVID, uh, still profitable right out of the gate. Uh, but we took a phased approach, and we took all their work um, and, I guess, refined it and took a staged approach and built a smaller operation first to get established uh, and then grow the, the larger resource underneath. And that's what we've done in the last couple of years, we've actually doubled the size of the deposits uh, while building the smaller mine that's, that's generating cash flow from the surface. So it's a de-risking uh, approach, uh, and, and it allows you to bootstrap the company by using your own cash flow to actually then grow into the much larger deposit and mine underneath. So in 2017, we acquired that project, as well as a very large exploration license uh, called the UK license, Udam Hundi. And that's a, that's a license we're actually drilling for the first time ever this year. So a very exciting project that could be another mine for us. Uh, in 2018, we listed the company on the main board of the Toronto Stock Exchange. And in fact, we were the only uh, main board mining IPO in 2018. So in a very tough market, I guess we like our challenges, uh, we actually raised $25 million. Uh, we, we had the backing of, very strong backing of Elliott Management out of New York with uh, their, their uh, associated fund called Triple Flag Mining Finance, uh, which, which, which is a fantastic result to have very strong backers who saw you know, the longer game and, and, and were able to help us buy the asset for 20 million U.S. and help us build it for 20 million U.S. And now our first quarter of production last year generated over 25 million U.S. of sales on gold. So, uh, you know, a, a very exciting uh, base that we set up in the last few years. And in, in, in a way, we're just getting started. So today, Step Gold has produced successfully for nine months, uh, starting a uh, ramp up last year in, in 2020, April 2020. In a very tough time when borders were closed and restricted, we still successfully brought production online and profitably. So we're very happy with that result. And, and again, another tough environment in the year last year. Uh, so I guess challenges are a thing, but uh, certainly we're up for it. And now we have a good base to actually grow the company. And our goal is to build uh, a mid-tier precious metals company. So, you know, a, a, a production profile that could hit, you know, uh, 250,000 ounces a year and grow our resource, you know, to, to 5 million plus ounces. And at that point, that's... Uh, you know that is a multi-billion-dollar company, and today we're at a, we're at about 100 million. So a lot of room to grow, but now we've established a very strong base to to work off. Um, and and the goal is, like I mentioned earlier, is to build a sustainable company. So we don't need to just uh, build this and sell it. We could build and operate and, and generate a lot of uh, dividends or, or return of capital or, or share buybacks, other ways to, to create liquidity events for ourselves and investors. That's really the goal, yeah, and we're focused awesome. on Mongolia. Yeah, I, I, that was actually my next question. So I was going to say, okay, you're Canadian, capital markets experience, ton of it, um, and in Mongolia. I mean, tell me a little bit more about like what drew you there. Like, I mean, it's it's just that's not the obvious mess, I guess. If I if I'm saying that right, I'm like, but but here yeah. you talk about. It, I'm like, man, uh, I think I know how you're going over there. But um, but tell us a little bit more about kind of how that part came and how it is to kind of operate in that in that um, emerging economy, if you will. Sure, sure. Yeah, no, listen. Uh, so Mongolia is a, is a former Soviet satellite country. So they gained independence in the early 90s. It's a functional democracy. So they have elections every four years um, with a, with a one-year offset for the presidential election. So the prime minister and all the members of the parliament get elected in one, in one term in the, in the next year is the presidential election. So it functions uh, like any other democracy around the world. It's, uh, again, they, they, were, they, were, they were relatively new in terms of independence and, and under kind of the, the Soviet thumb. For, for a long time, and 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 it's obviously a resource-rich country, which we already know that because we've seen world-class discoveries of mines being built. So it's, it's it's an opportunity where we 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 as a team, you know, saw well ahead of everyone else because of Matt, my partner's uh, uh, past mm-hmm. uh, experience in country successfully. So how I got involved was I was advising Matt as a banker uh, on another transaction uh, in 2015, and that's where he he mentioned his. He wanted to get back into Mongolia and focus on precious metals, and he saw the opportunity then in 2016 as a, as, a, as kind of the, the turning turning point in, in the opportunity to kind of lay our base and be set up for the next you know few decades. So I got involved. I uh, said I'll be happy to be involved, and I helped set up the company from inception. You know, three of us 
we started with three people and now we have 300 uh, employees. Uh, so it was just an idea. Um, but I was able to help uh, raise the capital, negotiate the acquisition, uh, build a board and, and, and management team around that. And, and uh, it's very exciting. And, and if we've had such a great experience in 2016. The government's very supportive. They're pro-mining, they're pro-foreign investment, and, and, and in fact, they're pro-Step Gold. Uh, they actually have made their first ever investment through their sovereign fund into Step Gold. So the first ever mining investment was into Step Gold. So clearly a place that you can do business with strong support, um, and, um, and that's why we're there. Uh, we, see, we, we see the opportunity, and we saw it was the first mover advantage. Man, that's awesome. I love it. Um, yeah. that, I mean, it, it's a, a great insight into how sometimes these um, these things take place and how somebody goes into a market that, you know, and, and, and has a, has an idea, brings the right people together, brings the board together. I love the fact that you have a partner and you, you, you complement each other. I mean, that's the way I look. We're in the media business here, obviously, but my, my partner, mm-hmm. Chirag, like, I can't do what he does, and, and he allows <laughs> me to do what I need to do all day, and if I'm not recording an interview, he's mad. Why aren't you doing an interview? And if he's not out there doing – biz dev or negotiating some deal for us i'm like what are you doing you're not recording anything today (laughs) so so it's good to have partners that like complement each other and it sounds like you put together a great team and a great board around you to make sure because if you didn't then you wouldn't be having this type of success i mean nothing against you but we all need to have partners and support and people that complement what um what we do to make something from small and inception to a bigger business and so i look at um obviously what gets a lot of media and i'm glad to have you on today because a lot of media is in excitement around Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, all these other things. But when I hear somebody, you know, a, young, a younger entrepreneur out there, um, you know, going into gold as a value proposition, I mean, what's your thoughts on just kind of, I know they're complete opposite ends of the spectrum, by the way. I would argue, not everybody would argue that, by the way. That's my opinion. Um, so mm-hmm. like, what would be your value proposition, maybe even to some of those younger listeners that are, that are tuning in right now that don't really know much about gold? Uh, so, well, I, I guess uh, first, gold is, um, you know, it's the oldest currency <laughs> in the world. Yeah. So it's, it's, held, it's held its value and it's been around forever. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, yes, there's always new uh, opportunities like the cryptos mm-hmm. and, but, you know, and, and, and related currencies uh, in the world. And, and I have actually, I, I, I don't think they're um, exactly off it. I think they're also alternative assets mm-hmm. where there, there could be storage of value uh, and, and it's an opportunity, you know, like, like gold or precious metals mm-hmm. to be able to, to hold and, and, and own uh, uh, something that can store value that's not just in cash, right, or, or bonds yeah. or, or equity. And so gold has always performed, uh, I would say, quite similar in terms of uh, cycles around the, around the world in, in, in over the hundreds and thousands of years. And it's always maintained uh, its ability to store, store, store in, 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 in safe uh, in a safe manner, it's value, right? So it, it, it served its purpose and it always has and, it, and it's been around for so long, I don't think it's going anywhere. So it's, it's, it's a great opportunity to have, uh, you know, a small piece of precious metals or, or gold in your portfolio and you can, sure, you can have crypto. I don't, I don't see them as competition. I just see them as, as another opportunity, right? It's a newer one and I think it may be a bit more volatile uh, and not regulated uh, as much as, uh, gold is, and, and gold is a very liquid market, right? We can produce as much gold as we can, and we can sell it the next minute uh, at the market price without any discount. Um, so that's a very liquid and, and large market um, that certainly has a, a storage of value, and it's proved that definitely during inflationary times. So um, gold we like, and, then we've, and, and I don't think it's going anywhere. Sure, the pricing could go down um, as it has in the past, but it always ends, ends up coming back up. And, and certainly, it's, 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 uh, it, ha- it plays the defense it's supposed to be. Um, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm still again not against uh, the cryptos and the alternative assets. I think they all play a part. Uh, some, some more than others, I guess. Uh, certainly, but gold is gold has performed and, and been there forever. I guess that's my. Right, point. Yeah, and then that's well said. I think that was poor worrying on my part when I said they're opposite. I, I, I meant I don't mean as a whole a store of value, and I don't mean as a currency. I just meant more so in terms of like the marketing side of things. Like I feel like for the younger generation, and I mean even much younger than myself, um, they're you know they look at something like uh, um, like gold just isn't always quite as sexy for them. And I don't feel like it. Um, obviously, that's not how we should be making investment decisions. By the way, it has nothing to do with that. But I just mean the way that I see it. In 
the media and other things like that. Like you don't hear quite as much. It's not quite as clickable always. So that's why I'm, I'm happy to have you on the line because I want to make sure that people hear the other side of the story too, not just who's buying the most ads or who has, you know, who, who, who's the best yeah. at getting attracting eyeballs, so to speak, right? <laughs> Sure. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And and I still think gold is sexy as well. And and certainly it's it's a, you know, it's 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 quite uh, you know, uh in, in, ingrained in cultures in Asia as well mm-hmm. as you as you may know. Uh and that's not going away. So regardless of cryptocurrencies or anything else, yep. uh you can't change these people's minds over thousands of years of gold is used for yeah. for, you know, celebration to, you know, holy festivals to weddings and wedding seasons and that, that does not that hasn't changed and it won't um, I completely no I couldn't agree with you. Couldn't agree with you more on the, on that one, Neil. Um, so that being said, uh, first off, it's been great having you on the show today. Appreciate your um, insight into what you're doing over at Step Gold, and of course, um, and of course, you know, insight into Mongolia and other things. And wish you continued success. And that being said, uh, if somebody's listening to this right now and they want to learn more about Step Gold or they want to connect, I mean, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the best way, obviously, there's just, you know, two, directly th- through me. I'm happy to always have a call uh, with investors, uh, big and small. Uh, as I tell people, I speak to people who buy hundreds of shares and those who buy tens of millions and, and everyone in between. So uh, myself is always a good resource, uh, uh, Anil at stepgold.com, that's A-N-E-E-L at S-T-E-P-P-E gold.com, or our website, www.stepgold.com. S T E P P E Gold dot com, and from there, actually, you can actually set up a meeting with, with myself or, or our, our management team as well. So there are lots of good resources, videos of Mongolia, of our operations. I think people will fall in love just the way I did uh, five years ago with the country and the opportunity, and you can feel the buzz. So uh, please reach out any, in any manner. Man, that's great. Awesome. Um, well, Neil, again, thank you for coming on the show today, and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. Hope you learned a lot. If you did, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. We definitely want you to be return visitors and listeners. We have a lot more mission-based entrepreneurs and businesses coming on the line. Don't want you to miss any of that, so hit that subscribe button. And, uh, Neil, thanks again for coming on the show. It has been a pleasure. Thanks very much for having me, and and thanks for your listeners as well. Appreciate it.